Alfred Hitchcock was born on August 13, 1899 in Leytonstone, London. He was the youngest of three children to his poultry farmer father, William J. Hitchcock. His family was mostly Roman Catholic and had an Irish background. When Hitchcock grew older, his family sent him to the Jesuit classic school St. Ignatius College near Stamford Hill. He often described his childhood as being very lonely and sheltered by a situation compounded by his obesity. On numerous occasions, he said, he was sent by his father to the local police station with a note asking the officer to lock him away for 10 minutes as a punishment for behaving badly. This idea of being harshly treated or wrongfully accused is frequently reflected in his films. Hitchcock's mother would often make him address her while standing at the foot of her bed, especially if he behaved badly, forcing him to stand there for hours. These experiences would later be used for the portrayal of the character of Norman Bates in his movie Psycho. Hitchcock's father died when he was 14. In the same year, Hitchcock left St. Ignatius to study at the London Lee Council School of Engineering and Navigation in Poplar. After graduating, he became a draftsman and advertising designer. During this period, Hitchcock became intrigued by photography and started working in film production in London, working as a title card designer for the London branch of what would become Paramount Pictures. In 1920, he received a full-time position at Arlington Studios with its American owner, famous players Lasky, and their British successor, Gainsborough Pictures, designing the titles for silent films. Hitchcock's last assignment with Graham Cutts led him to Germany in 1924. The Prinzessin und der Geiger, also known as the Black Guard, was directed by Cutts, co-written by Hitchcock, and produced in Berlin. Hitchcock also worked as an art director on the set of F.W. Murnau's film, The Last Laugh. He was very, he was very impressed with Murnau's work and later used many techniques for the set design in his own productions. At the end of the 1930s, David O. Selznick signed Hitchcock to a seven-year contract beginning in March 1939 when Hitchcock moved to the United States. His rise from title designer to film director took five years, and by the end of the 1930s, Hitchcock had become one of the most famous filmmakers in England. The suspense and gallows humor that had become Hitchcock's trademark in film continued to appear in his productions. Hitchcock is well known for his use of uh, new technologies and uh, coming up with new techniques for using them. So for instance, uh, the vertigo effect which he, uh, in which he pioneered the combination of camera movement and zooming in vertigo. Uh, here's an example of this kind of moving, moving in and zooming out at the same time that keeps me at about the same size in the frame uh, while seeming to separate me from the background. He's also uh, considered a really extraordinarily gifted uh, editor, uh, a, a planner of decoupage and uh, really one of the earliest users of uh, pre-visualizing his continuity with storyboarding.
What's less known is his pioneering uh, the extensive use of the expressive long take during the period after his contract with Selznick when he uh, had his own company called Transatlantic Pictures. And during this time, he developed with his cinematographer on the first of a series of three films, The Paradine Case, uh, with Garms and the grip on the film, Maurice Rosen, uh, the first practical modern crap dolly uh, that was later refined to, into what we have today. Uh, he had a number of uh, impressive, uh, expressive long takes in the parody in case, using what they what they call Rosie's dolly, because Morris Rosen, the grip, was the one who actually built the thing, uh, and then he he used the same dolly uh, in his famous rope, which consists of nine uh, expressive long takes for a total of about 90 minutes. Uh, and for that film, he actually uh, employed four dolly grips. Each one of them he gave uh, special green credit on the film. The only time uh, grips ever were really foregrounded as camera movement technicians uh, in the credits of a film. And uh, so his, his ability to, uh, as he later described it, take uh, shots that he would use in an editing pattern and connect them by camera movement to create these, these wonderful continuous fluid movements in the Paradine case, Rope, and then finally in Under Capricorn were, were a unique period in his career. Uh, he continued obviously using camera movement very effectively later in his long career, but uh, that, that five-year period or so uh, was really exceptional in his, in his concentration experimentally on, on developing the expressive long take. Along with Walt Disney, Hitchcock was one of the first prominent motion picture producers to fully envision just how popular the medium of television would become. From 1955 to 1965, he was the host and producer of a long-running television series entitled Alfred Hitchcock Presents. While his films had made Hitchcock's name strongly associated with suspense, the TV series made Hitchcock a celebrity himself. Oh, oh, good evening. I was just about to send greetings to an old friend. I'm sure modern civilized methods of homicide are much more efficient, but I don't care for them. I abhor violence. That is why on this program we use stabbings, shooting, and garrotings only when they are absolutely essential to the plot or when the whim strikes us. Tonight's play begins in a museum and the title is The Cheney Vase. That's all I intend to tell you. You'll have to figure the rest out for yourselves. And now our sponsor wishes to say a few words designed to send you rushing out immediately to buy his products. But please endeavor to restrain yourselves. I don't want you to miss our story. Near the end of his life, Hitchcock had worked on the script for a projected spy thriller, The Short Night, collaborating with screenwriters James Costigan and Ernest Lehman. Despite some preliminary work, the story was never filmed. This was due primarily to Hitchcock's own failing health and his concerns over the health of his wife, Alma, who had suffered a stroke. The script was eventually published posthumously in the book Hitchcock's Last Years. Hitchcock died from renal failure in this Bel Air, Los Angeles, California home at the age of 80. His wife, Alma Revel, and their daughter, Patricia Hitchcock O'Connell, both survived him. Hitchcock's body was cremated and his ashes were scattered over the Pacific.